Sometimes when parent is stuck, the other should be terminated. It still exists, but it's uh, legally run until the job is done. That is called open process. But open process is usually the allowed process to be completed. To avoid such a uh, problem, in normal zombie or the open, you can make the process demo process. So demo process, demo process from the process tree. For example, here, some of the processes. Let's see the oh, which one? A print. Let's see. I, when after I log in, I start the, this process, printer dem demo, okay? But if I log out the system, this demo process, this process will be terminated. So I try to make it as the, make it run forever until system is down. So you can make the, this one as the demo. So it, demo process means you can change the ownership, parentship to the Super user. That means process ID one. How can we make it? There is a uh, command to make the like the. It's not the background. Background means it's running. Okay, but still it has a parent and children relationship. You can use the this symbol or the BG command. Okay, but the, to make the demo process. There's a separate command in Unix, but I cannot remember. That's very good. Uh, how to get that command out in Windows? At this one? Yeah. Uh, you need to install the specific program. It's not the between the function. So called the PS list long time ago, but I do not know the currently. So why don't you search whether still uh, exists, whether this one is running on the Windows 7 and 8. I didn't test. Yes, this. What there are similar things. Why even you can implement by yourself this kind of thing by retrieving the process ID and parent process ID. You can actually make the tree structure. Not very complicated. So that is the process termination. This is an example of the multi-process architecture using the Chrome browser. One of the problem of the browser. <coughs> is browser usually you request the document to the one destination using the URL, right? Then server will respond the a.html file. But nowadays, even within one browser, okay, you have many different hyperlinks. So video will be displayed from the different side. Okay, because it's uh, embedded. Which means, even though you display one browser, it can connect to multiple destinations. Also, you can probably use two or three tabs at the same time. However, according to the process structure, if one of them is terminated, falsely, aborted, because of <coughs> that, this one, or process, which means your browser will be terminated. So that's not fair. So I still want to see the, the other one. So nowadays, many of the, most of the browser, including Chrome, they create the many processes. When you click, when you start the Chrome browser, only one process? No, many processes. Why don't you check the, your task manager? When you so sometimes it takes a lot of resource. It's a scary sometimes. So it's not only for browser Chrome. The process actually check the update or the some this the synchronize a lot. So there are three different groups of process even. One is for the browser, another one is uh, combining the HTML document or I.O. and a bunch of things. The third one is a plugin. Okay? So because of that, if you 
Uh, from time to time, when you are using the uh, Microsoft Microsoft Internet Explorer, you will be asked whether you wanna optimize your browser. Which means if you can disable the plugin, so that means you do not create the process for them. You can save your resource, right? So that is uh, the idea. To actually the to speed up the such a browsing interface or browser, there are many actually the efficient programming the language, not only just uh, the Java, for example JavaScript and so for example Node.js is used for asynchronous the communication in the HE, the TCP IP environment. Then, once we create a process, how many processes? It's not just one, there are many processes. They need to communicate each other, okay? For maintenance purpose, or for if we even within one process, so this process parent process create a different job, but they need to communicate each other. So how can we communicate? So do we create the TCP IP? No. So it's in the same machine, the computer architecture. So we need a different the communication method. That is called inter-process communication, IPC. So IPC is useful for most of the problem. Most of the topic, the algorithm and structure that we are discussing in this method are mostly general. Okay? In specific case, we will deal with the case by case. So inter-process communication IPC, there are two models for inter-process communication. You can actually imagine, one is blue team board, shared part. You can put the something message over here, the other student can see. It's a, the shared memory approach. Another one is you can use if you go to the, I'm not sure whether UB has the, the PO box for each student. No? Can you get the mail for your box? In the hall, I guess. In the hall, I guess. Hall, not hall. Uh, North Hall has uh, such a box. So if you want to send a message or the mail, okay, not email, so if it was snail mail, you can send it. There's a box for each student. So you can put over there. That is called a message passing. So you can send a message for a specific. So there are two. So, for example, A is the, so there is a message Q. So process B sent a message to specific. So zero is for the process A, the one is for B, something like that, and take it. Or sometimes they can share the message queue, okay? That any process can take it. Shared memory, there's a specific it, the shared area in the memory, then using the address of the shared memory area, the process can communicate with each other. Hmm? Which one is fast? Depends on. Okay. So we cannot say which one is faster, and there are Actually, the synchronization problem also, if some, if you allow, so it's a general the group. Hmm? So, for example, when you create the, because I'm teaching the database, when you start the database system, database system, what does that mean? Starting the database, DBMS, it's a creating process. Only one process, you create the many process. Like the one process is providing a data, another one is reading a data, the third one is managing the buffer, and so on. They need to communicate. So at that time, the database system uses very big shared memory. Because it's so complicated when you use the message group. However, I want to communicate to each other for the process or user. It's an email system. Email system use message within the system. So actually the email system is, has been developed within the system. I'm not sure whether you use the Pine software and or Pico. 
So using that one, so you can check the message from. At that time, it's based on the message. Okay? But it depends on types of the communication. Also, using such a uh, IPC or the process communication tool, they can work together. Okay, so also they can share the information, so they don't have to process again that's already done. Also, uh, they can share the job, speed up the uh, job, and modularity and other. How can we cooperate? between or among the processes is we can design model, such a cooperation model as the consumer and produ producer and consumer problem. Okay? So I think you already see such a thing if you uh, if you already took the algorithm course. So producer and consumer problem is one can just feed on. Okay? create the buffer or the some shared area, then the other one is only read. So in case of the in case of the shared memory IPC between two process, process A put the data, that is producer. And the other one is just read the data, which means it's a consumer. So we can design model such a communication method for cooperation as a consumer and produ producer and consumer model. What are they? Actually, data structure. Okay, so this is the uh, simplified the data structure for shared data. So it has a buffer. Okay. So if you add the data and the uh, data, buffer size will be reduced. And producer put the data, then reduce the buffer size. The consumer read the data and increase the buffer size. It can be explained, the, for example, shared memory. So you can create a shared memory for the, such a buffer. Mm -hmm. But because we are using the shared memory, there's a problem of the synchronization. What is a synchronization? Synchronize swimming. Should it be same? Okay. Yes. Just between two points, mm -hmm. two points in the data with same uh, status. Same status? That they can't click the lock in, but they can't let it in. That it will be the solution of the synchronization, right? Synchronization problem is. I create a shared data, shared part. So this is a zero. So we have two, the consumer. One consumer, one process would like to always plus one. Another one is minus one. They try to read the data and perform their job at the same time. What will be this one? It's a race condition. They are racing. So it can be zero, it can be minus one, it can be plus one. Right? In case they read the same time, zero, and this is a minus, this is a uh, plus one, then they write this one, write a little bit first, then later this one, it will be minus one, either otherwise it's one, or so if they perform the sequentially, it will be zero. So we cannot guarantee the data. So it's a synchronization problem. It's not synchronized. So that will be discussed separately in chapter five. So shared, when you are using the shared memory, so for example, locking is one of the solutions uh, for the synchronization. What about the message passing? So we can create the message. The data structure, what is a message? It's a data structure. Mostly it's a queue, okay? So we have two operations. One is to send the message to the queue, and another one is to receive, the, take the message from the message queue. Okay? This message size can be either fixed size or the variable size. Okay? One of the examples is the message box. Okay? 
in the email system. So how can we implement uh, such a message? Communication using the message. Okay, we can establish the communication link between two, then the send the message or receive the message. One of the best solution is we can use the queue. However, when we implement a, such a messaging, there might be some problem like the, this one. <coughs> what is the link? So actually, so you need to create the something, find this script, identifier, then share, find the two. Then they know where is that data structure is, for example, message queue, something like that. And the capacity of the link, if you are using the network, the uh, message queue, how many message can be uh, served in that queue, something like that. Is it the directional or by the, so you need to uh, consider when you implement such a message passing uh, for your inter-process communication. So direct communication does not use such a in between the structure like the queue. Instead, they directly send a message and receive the message. The indirect communication they use the something in mid media in mid uh, in between the data structure like the um, message queue or the box. Box is a message queue, okay? And also it has the each box has the unique ID, then using unique ID, <coughs> so each process can take the receiver, know whether I get the message or not. When you send a message, the sender uh, specify that uh, the destination. So, in So in the mailbox approach, so you can uh, communicate not only just the two, but you can as many process as possible. So by assigning the specific ID, like in case of the three process, you can assign one, two, and three uh, for each process, so they know the uh, whether I received the message, or you can specify the destination. There are different types of the uh, message passing. Uh, one is blocking or non-blocking. So blocking means when you send the data, the, the other process cannot send the data until the message is delivered. Okay? That is a blocking. It's called the synchronous. However, if you allow send the data, even though the previous message is not delivered, you can keep sending. That is the non-blocking or synchronous. What about the email? Email is a synchronous or not the non-synchronous or synchronous? Synchronous. You can keep sending. Okay. Sometimes it can be delivered. The last one is delivered earlier than the previous one. Okay. And you can lose the uh, data that is uh, asynchronous. What about FTP? FTP is uh, synchronous. You need to confirm whether data is delivered. Because of that, FTP used two port. Okay? One is in, one is out, whether you receive the data or not. So that is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous. Also, you can implement the uh, Sending is the blocking synchronous and the receiving is asynchronous, whatever. So anyway, so that is depends on the, your policy. So for such a the message queue, uh, message can, can be considered as the buffer, okay? Not share the memory buffer is a message queue buffer. So uh, even you can use most of the operating system provide the default the data structure for queue and the, met, the shared memory and the buffer. So you can create the URL buffer, offer initially zero capacity or the certain 
the limited the size of the buffer or sometimes unbounded infinity uh, length of the sender. Can be possible. This is an example of the uh, IPC in port six system. Port six is uh, the one of the branch main branch of the operating system. Okay, so we can create such a shared memory using SHM and the open. Okay. And we can set the size of the buffer, like the 4K in this example. Then you can actually, just like the when you print out, what, the, what does it mean when you are using the print F? It's a standard out. So whenever you create the process, it has a default. Standard input, standard output, standard error. So 0, 1, 2. Am I correct? 0, 1, 2 for ID? I think so. So that is default whenever you create the file. So similarly, if you want to send a message to the specific shared memory that you define, at the time you can use the S print F. It's just like what you print out using standard input and standard output. So this one is a standard output. But this here, this data will be sent <coughs> to the that define the shared memory. Then somebody can read such a write, writing to shared memory this data using the uh, system code. That is a communication. So you can implement the producer and consumer Okay. Using shared memory here. There is a uh, Mahu communication, the IPC system. Okay, they provide a set of the library. Okay, but I didn't see much of that in practical thing. What of the Windows? Windows use IPC also. So it's called Advanced Local Procedure Code, LPC. That is actually the IPC. In another way of communication of the between or among the process is based on client server system. Nowadays, client server system, client server in my, uh, communication method are used for inter no, intra process the the between two nodes using the network. Okay. However, that was developed based on inter process communication. So even you can communicate. Uh, between two process using such a client server system, probably you did the socket programming in your network class or Unix the programming class. Okay, what is a socket? Socket is verb, right? It is male and female. Just like that, when you communicate the each other two process. If the when two processes need to communicate, they need okay follow the protocol. Okay, that fit to just like that, like the socket, verb socket. If you purchase the different types of the verb that doesn't fit the socket, you cannot use it. So it's matched. What information do you need to communicate using socket? In other words. What about the TCP IP based application? What information you, you need? Port number and IP address. So these two information, using these two information, you can communicate. IP address is the address of the computer. And port number is? Gate. It's kind of a gate. Where are you? For example, this. Door is allowed for only professor. So student cannot access the this room. Student is, is, I know, this is not allowed. Anyway, similarly, the, if you want to communicate, for, for example, file transfer, okay? I'd like to uh, send a message, upload the message, download the message. At that time, you can use only 
port number 20 and 21. I'd like to download, request the data using HTTP. This is a hypertext transfer protocol, right? Usually used for web browser or web request. This one used default A. They all of these are based on socket program. Okay? So for the socket program, you can use the socket, the method for process communication. So socket is defined as endpoint of communication in the IP address and port. So everybody, I don't have to explain what is the IP address and port. But you'd better know the well-known port when you are using the uh, operating system. What well-known port do you know? 80 is HTTP. And 20, 21 is FTP. And 23 is a teller. What is the teller? This time, I'd like to borrow the power of the Google. By the way, how can I remove the this one? <laughs> but anyway, to get the permission to use the smart board, I need to take the course. So that's the reason. So, well, no, so it's there. So, For example, the ping, uh, the echo is a seven, right? And what is the twenty is the FTP transfer, and twenty one is the use of control, and CQ set is twenty two. Yeah, I'm correct. The teller is a twenty three, okay. Also SMTP for mail is a twenty five, and so on. Usually. Less than 1,024 is the result port, well-known port, but the nowadays even the commercial, very well-known commercial software, they try to reserve that one. Then they said it's a well-known port, such as the uh, 1521 for Rapper, the communication, and uh, 50,000 for the DB2, and so on. So, but. The reason why we need to know well-known port is already used for other applications, even when operating system is installed. So you'd better avoid such a well-known port. So this diagram shows the connection-oriented protocol. There are two types of the uh, socket connection. One is connection, and another one is connection-oriented. Another one is Connection list. Connection is which one? TCP or UDP? TCP. It's a TCP. The connection list is UDP. UDP. That is the reason. Long time ago. Nowadays, I'm not sure. The what is the video player in the Windows? Media the media player actually they suggest that uh, under the low bandwidth environment, you'd better set UDP because it's a connection list, which means Every time it tries to con get the <coughs> packet data. So, in case your network is not reliable, if you are using the TCP, it's based on the connection uh, oriented. First, you should have to get the packet data, you need to connect and make the establish the, the link between me, client, and the video server. But if the network is not so good, it's you, every time you need to reconnect, that is expensive, it takes a time. Okay? So when you are using the UDP, it's just keep requesting for each packet. So you can get the data. The problem is sometimes you can get the later data first, right? And so you need to 
uh, many the order whether you may lo lose certain data. And this is a connection oriented, so should be established. What does that mean? Connection is tabulous. Connected. Connected. <laughs> For from the requester, sender, they request I need to communicate with them. This receiver has the process. This process get the request through the specific port. So which means this server keep watching that port, whether there is a request or not. If there is a request, and create children process, right, to manage that one. So 10,000 user, 10,000, you need to create a 10,000. To address that problem, 10,000 user, so you can create the thread or other multiple way. Okay. So that is the connection oriented. What about the connection list? We don't have to. For each data request, you can use IP address and port number to get the packet data. It will be possible. So you have the three packet, but second packet will be lost. Or th third packet alive. The first. Then followed by the first one, second one, first one. Nowadays, this socket programming uh, to use the most of the web interface and the web link for the intra communication, like the web server. What about the Java? In Java, you can easily implement the TCP or UDP. I think that if you already took the uh, network <coughs> programming, so you probably implement such a thing. And also, there is a remote procedure core, okay? So which means you can execute the command. So I we have two server here and so I'm the server and here's another server. I'd like to execute the command like the PS command in his server. At that time, what does that mean? Execute the PS command. I need to create the children process. What? Children is not my home, it's his home. At that time, so we used remote procedure port. So I'm going to ask okay, the uh, remote server. Okay. Then that remote procedure port create the children process. That is IPC. Nowadays IPC is the problem of security, because I can remotely uh, the run the specific command to the remote side, so it's not allowed many of the uh, operating systems.